It's crept around in the darkest corners of your Twitter feed, lurked in the shadows of every Tumblr post. Its army of festering followers grows in the ruins of your grandmother's Facebook account, the ultimate boogeyman of every aspiring artist. <laughs> Hello my fluffs, I'm your friendly fluff dragon and welcome to Fluff Dragon Art, where I help creatives from all walks of life go from starving artists to making a viable living doing what you love. If you love art and want to kick the struggling artist stigma between the legs, hit that subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date on all my tutorials, live streams, and other awesome content. So you remember that feeling of walking into your dark bedroom at night and seeing all those strange shapes and in your little kid mind seeing nothing but monsters under the bed and behind your closet door or even hiding under that pile of toys and dirty clothes that blanketed your carpet? Then you turn on your light and poof, it's just your room, the safest place in the world. That's kind of what I want to do here with the concept of capitalism. But before you start pulling out your knives and pitchforks, I want to say that this video is not dedicated to converting people to believe in capitalism. It isn't even limited to talking to countries who have adopted capitalism. Let me explain. First off, what the heck is capitalism? There are a few places where you can get differing points of view, so I went to a neutral source, the dictionary. Capitalism, an economic system in which investment in and ownership of the means of production, distribution, and exchange of wealth is made and maintained chiefly by private individuals or corporations, especially as contrasted to cooperatively or state-owned means of wealth. The latter definition, of course, referring to socialism. Now, I'm not going to go into which economic method is better, as this is not a political channel, but I do want to show you how you can hack this system in your art business and use it to your advantage. The thing about dealing with capitalism is that it's a constant experiment. You have to look at your art business as kind of a science project. Oh joy, right? But it can actually be a lot of fun. Who knew that mad artists could also be mad scientists? Mwahahaha! <laughs> Put first things first. I don't even want you to think about what capitalism is at this stage. If you've only been actively working on and improving your art for less than two years, you need to simply continue improving your work. Developing your own recognizable and brandable style takes time, effort, and practice. So sit back, relax, take the time you need to enjoy the process of learning anatomy, lighting, form, posing, perspective, and reinforcing your habits for improvement as they will follow you throughout your artistic career. Learn to love your art, even when the going gets tough, and gain the positive outlook and mindset you'll need to move forward as success will come from your hard, intelligent work. You can, of course, occasionally post your work to various social media outlets, but I wouldn't worry about having an official page, posting schedule, or commission menu right now. If you've managed to gain three to four years of experience as an artist and have a decent foundation in your know-how, now is the time to begin thinking about branding. The best way to master capitalism is to prepare for it. It's at this point that you want to start studying prices for your artwork and actively accepting commissions. Continue to build on your skills and test your limits, but also learn about brand psychology, logo development, and continuity. You don't want to settle on something just yet, but start preparing for the next steps coming up and thinking about how you want to present yourself. Learn and study what works for your social media posting schedule. If you decide to make videos, start learning how to edit them effectively. Don't worry about subscriber, follower, like, and share counts right now. This is a stage of experimentation. Have fun with it. At this point, the five to six year mark, you've practiced so much that you could have likely gotten a bachelor's degree in art with a minor in business. And this is perfect. True entrepreneurs are in it for the long haul. You know what it takes to build and grow and develop in both your art and entrepreneur skills. And it's time to jump in with both feet. A word of caution, don't quit your day job yet. Jumping into the waters of entrepreneurship does not mean that you don't come up for air when you need to. That being said, you are going to be dedicating a lot more time to your little business baby than you have been. Up until this point, it's just been a happy little thought, a pleasant dream. Now it's time to bring that dream into reality and start making some firm decisions. Settle in on your brand. Determine your ultimate customer avatar. Decide which media medium you're going to focus on. 
Discover what posting schedule has worked best for you and cement it in place. You're going to be following this regimen religiously for the next while, so make sure it isn't just something you can handle, but something you'll enjoy. Finding the perfect balance for you right now is important. If you don't, you'll find yourself leaning too much towards your art or towards your business too early, and that will cause problems in future stages of development. Let's be honest here. If an artist hasn't been focusing much on the business side of things at this point, it's going to be a little more difficult to bring those habits in now. Difficult, but not impossible. I know a lot of people say that capitalism makes the rich richer and the poor poorer, but there's a trick here to fix that. Become rich. What? I'm serious. Have you ever heard the definition of insanity? When someone does the same thing over and over again and expects a different result, right? Well, if you haven't reached success at this point, I want you to take a long, objective look at what you've been doing and what you've tried that was within your power and see what, perhaps, you could change. Because if you aren't successful at this stage, something must have gone wrong. And please, please don't say it's because of capitalism or the YouTube algorithm or the entitlement of youth today. I'm not saying none of these things are true. They very well could be. But they are excuses, and we as entrepreneurs can't afford to have the luxury of excuses. In spite of what a lot of people tend to believe, the system isn't out to get you. In fact, the system doesn't care about you at all. The system is like a hammer. There are many ways in which it can hurt you, but there are many more ways that it can help, if used properly. So if you drop the hammer on your toe or swing it just a little too far to the left and hit your thumb, don't blame the hammer. Suck in a deep breath, shake your hand, or hop around and curse a little, and learn from your mistakes. No matter what your political stance, everyone can benefit from learning how to make the best out of their current situation. But what are your thoughts? Comment below with the timestamp of your most or least favorite part of this video and tell me why you liked or hated it. I want to hear from you. A special thank you goes out to my patrons, Gigabit the Saved Gamer and Hard Brock Life. I couldn't keep creating these videos without your wonderful help and support. If you would like me to list your name here or gain access to patron-exclusive entrepreneur trainings and live streams, click on the link in the description below. Until next time, stay fluffy, my friends. Yeah.